Hey, this is Brad from Pedal Power Generator. Right here we have a setup to do your own bicycle generator. It's got a wooden platform to lay a bike stand. This is a universal approach where it doesn't matter the size of the bike stand. You just lay it on the piece of wood, put these blocks against the bar, and then it holds the stand to the wood. So it's a very nice approach if it, you, know, you have the strange type of bike stand. Uh, it doesn't even matter. It works great with this type of setup. This is the 300 watt belt drive generator. It's got a V-belt pulley on it right here, and it's a size 3L belt. We have wood screws here to hold down these blocks. We have four of the mounting bolts for the generator. These are six millimeter, one inch long. And then we have three and a half inch long, five sixteenths bolts. This will hold the risers in place. We have this paddle bit here, it's a seven eighths. That does a countersink on this top plate so that it will allow these bolts to sink in and uh, not be above the surface here. So that's called countersinking when you make a hole like this. These are riser plates that elevate the, the generator high enough so that the belt will not rub on this bar right here. Here you have a folding bike stand. Any bike stand will work with this setup. So I happen to use this one. It's a simple one from eBay. Normally there's a wheel here for exercising. I just took the wheel off. Any bike stand will work because you can use these blocks anywhere you want to secure the stand. So you don't have to have this exact model. So here we have the, the platform and the belt that's going to be used to go around the rear wheel. You need about uh, 70 to 80 inches of this belt to make this work. And here I have some alligator clips and a LED light strand so we can Light it up just for fun, see how it works. And here you have a screwdriver used to put these down and a tape measure to cut all your wood. So this is the basic set of items you need to, to do this project. You might have a different version of it. This is just one version you can do. All right, so we're gonna start right now putting the platform together. We need to put the risers right here to elevate the generator. But first we gotta mount the generator onto the riser plate. So get these bolts here. This is a 10 millimeter socket we're gonna use. Put it in, you can use a wrench or a drill. Line up the first bolt and then the other three. Just get them started, that's the key. Is don't cross thread these bolts because the minute you cross thread them and you tighten down on them, you've ruined the thread. So be real careful, it should be Pretty easy to put these in here. Come along, set your clutch on your cordless drill to like 25%, which is for me, it's like a four or five here. And uh, put these on. And this was used to make these countersinks right, holes right here. It's a seven eighths paddle bit. So that's how you make this indentation here is using a paddle bit on the wood. All right, so now we have the top plate. This is the other two. We're gonna go ahead and put those down here. And then we have the 5 16th bolts. We have some flat washers on them. So one washer on the bottom and one washer on the top. Tip this up in the air and we're gonna line these up here. There's the first bolt. It's okay that they're not lined up right now. They will be once we add the other set of bolts. So we'll just start this finger finger tight like this, finger tight. Now these can all get lined up. We'll poke these bolts through. All right, so we're gonna tighten up this last 5 16 bolt, finger tight. So you can go back with a wrench and finish tightening them. You only need about like five foot pounds on these nuts. You don't need a lot of force on them. Now we have the generator mounted on the riser blocks and it's time to go ahead and fit the bike stand to the adapter plate. Put this against there, turn it around this way, backwards, which works fine either way. And now we can go ahead and put our blocks in against the pieces of wood. Just set them in there good so that you can still get it out if you need to get it off to take it, to take it apart. All right, so these are Phillips head screws. These are Phillips head screws right here. So we're gonna use the Phillips head and a cordless drill. Set it to, let's say half half torque. Mine's at about 
12 and uh, low speed or else it'll strip them out. In some cases you want to put a pilot hole into the baseboard. You need to put holes in the blocks because it's too hard to get through them. Um, put about uh, quarter inch holes. You definitely want the holes bigger than the screws so that way they can tighten down to the wood. And here I have three screws in this big one. Now we are ready to put the bicycle onto the stand. All right, now we're gonna take the wheel off the bike so we can put the belt around it. First, we're gonna loosen the rear brake. Then we're gonna loosen the axle nuts. We're gonna pull back the derailleur and we're gonna slide the wheel off the bike. All right, so for releasing the brake, we need to squeeze the brake arms together and then lift the cable assembly out of the, the notch that's in the clip. So that's how you do it like that. That frees up this wheel so it can slide out. All right, we're gonna loosen these nuts out. You need to make sure you have the right size wrench or you'll, you'll damage the nuts. So get a good wrench or socket, loosen it up. Give it a couple of turns on each side. Now we're going to pull the derailleur back, hold it back and lift out the wheel. There we go, pull the derailleur back. Now we can let the derailleur go and there's our wheel. To let the air out of the tire, you just need to press down on the little center piece right here with a, a sharp object and push down until you stop hearing the air. So now the air stopped flowing. Some tires are very difficult to get off of the rim. But not, if yours is like that, you can get some dishwashing liquid. Just put a little bit around the rim. It makes it very, very slippery and easy to get off. So you wanna start taking the, the tire off the opposite side of the valve stem. So we'll start over here because the valve stem's over here and we'll lift that off of there. In some cases, you'll have to use a tire lever here, a plastic tire lever to get this off. This tire happens to be pretty loose, so we're lucky. Just use your finger. Again, that soap can make it much easier. This is the first side of the tire that we've gotten off. Again, if you try and use a screwdriver, you could puncture the, the tube and ruin it. So it's better to use a, a tire lever if you can get one, if you need it. Now grab the second part of the tire, pull, it slides off. There you go. There's a washer that's right here. And that needs to be kept against the nut, not against the inside here, but against this silver nut. So when you're putting it in, Keep an eye on those. Also, you have to flex your derailleur back out of the way so you can drop your sprocket into it. So this creates a window here to drop your sprocket in. And then now the sprocket's in, we can bring it down, pull that washer back, pull this washer back on this side, drop it in. And now we have it correctly installed. Finger tighten the nuts. So you need about 20 pounds of force when you tighten these, because these are what are holding you secure on the stand when you put this on the bike stand. So that's why these need to be real tight. You don't want to over tighten them because you'll strip the nut, but 20 pounds of force should be plenty. All right, so now we have a functioning installed wheel with no rubber showing. Open up these two pieces. So first you wanna put one bolt into the first cup and you should have two people do this to make it a little easier. There we go. So that's in and then the second one can go in. Tighten that up. And then together just start tightening like this. And you should go as far as you can, uh, physically can tighten them. That's the safest route is to go as tight as you can with one hand. And then the locks. 
Now that it's secured on here, we can just put it onto the platform. Line it up with the, with the generator so the generator's perfectly in line here. And then use the belt. So the wheel's gonna go this way. And you want the tabs on the belt facing this direction, like opposing direction of the wheel. So these tabs will catch on the end of the spokes. It has better traction. So put the tabs facing that way. And the open end is facing up. So we'll put this through your wheel. This is called an adjustable length V-belt. It's made by Power Twist. This is around $10 to $15 per foot. So you may not want to get this. If you want to save money, you can get a fixed length V-belt from your local auto store like AutoZone or O'Malley's. You take this stem right here, you put it through two links like that. Then you reach through with some nail nose pliers, grab the bottom tab right here, give it a little twist, bring it through, and then pull it. And now this is horizontal with this and this. So that's how you put this on. And then what we do is we put it on the tire, take it off the wheel a little bit, put it on the, this one's already been adjusted before we started. So normally you would have to remove uh, or add links as needed. Go backwards, it rolls on, see? So now, you can see my alignment's off a little bit. There we go. Now it's straight, straight shot. Tension is pretty good here. You, want, you don't want any tighter than this because it creates too much friction. And now we have a good connection, a mechanical connection to the generator. There it is. We're gonna do a quick voltage check on this and make sure the polarity is correct. So red should be positive and black should be negative. If we put the voltmeter on it here, alligator clip here, that's gonna to go to black. An alligator clip on the other probe, that's gonna to go to red. Make sure no the leads are touching, they're not. There's no hazardous energy here present because the generator is not moving, so we're pretty safe. So right here, we'll see the numbers and what we can get. Should be a positive. There we go. So we got some good numbers coming across there. 10 volts. So we do have a good output on the generator right now, just doing this test. And because there's no minus sign, that means it's correctly reading. The red is positive. So that's called a polarity, polarity check. So these are a set of 12 volt lights that uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn on here and see what we get. Just clip one of these to one of these wires. And if you wanna know the model number of these lights, you can send me a, a message and I'll give them to you. So theoretically, we should get some voltage here, some lights here. Uh, let's see. Maybe it's this way. There we go. We can put them. We can put them around the bike. Kind of make it a fun, uh, uh, real fun for events and stuff. If you're doing stuff at outdoor events, just unravel some of these LEDs. So we can go around the seat a couple times. Just be careful you don't kink the lights. You can go around the handlebars. There we go. So. I call this a light bike. It's fun to take to different events. There's still more here too, where it came from. You can do a lot of cool things with this stuff. So here we're putting about 50 watts of power out. All right, so thanks for watching this uh, short video on how to hook up a pulley drive bicycle generator that can do up to 300 watts of power. That's uh, 12 to 40 volts output. Uh, you can connect this to a power station. You can charge a, a battery with it through a charge controller and a fuse. And you can use it for lights. You can use it for a blender, a 12 volt blender to make drinks. There's lots of things you can do with it. The kids love doing this for science fairs and many times they win first place. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.